Have you ever been in a situation where you might have broken a computer or maybe the computer broke itself and you don't have a way to access it? Fortunately for us, most of the systems we work on here at LTT, LMG, Short Circuit, whatever you wanna call it, have something called IPMI or remote management. It's like a mini computer attached to the main computer. So if it freezes or something, you can turn the power off and on again. But if you don't have hardware like that, you don't really have a way to do that without physically going and pressing the power button. At least until now, or I mean, realistically, solutions like this have been on the market for a while, but this one, the Cyped Nano KVM Lite, and I guess this one's just the Nano KVM, can do it for very cheap. Wow, oh, it's so cute. This is like 30 US dollars or something like this. This little gadget right here, you connect HDMI to your computer, USB to your computer, and some of these pins to like the power and reset switches. And now you have full remote visibility and physical power switch control over any computer you want. You also, through that USB, have keyboard and mouse. Now you might've heard of similar projects like the Pi KVM, which is an awesome way to do that uh, open source kind of community project, but it's still pretty expensive. Even if you build the thing yourself, you're talking an order of a couple hundred dollars, cheaper than an enterprise solution, which does exist. But if you're trying to do this at your house, $30 seems a lot more compelling. Let's get the, the big boy unboxed here. Ooh, look at that. We got the little unit right there. We got the little board. This is like for the front panel header, so the power button, just a little bit cleaner way to do that rather than having to like run jumper cables off of this one. Oh, look, jumper cables, that's helpful. USB cable, a, two A to C cables, okay. Naturally, the fully fledged version is more expensive. You're looking around $60, but it does have some little cute goodies. Uh, we can't see it yet, but there's an OLED screen under here that prints out the IP address of the device, which can be helpful if you don't know how to get that. It's got buttons that are accessible, like power and reset. It also comes with the little daughter board that you can plug right into the headers of a computer. That way you can do the power situation a little nicer, and it also comes with the jumper cables to plug that in. Ports wise, they're pretty similar, but you can see the fully fledged one has an extra USB port, and that's for auxiliary power. So the light is meant to run off of the computer it's controlling. So it gets power and also supplies the mouse and keyboard signals to the computer through this one USB-C port. But if that computer stops supplying power, for instance, then this stops getting power. That's why there's an extra power cable on this one. An example I could think of is like during a BIOS update, let's say the computer by default doesn't provide power from the USB ports when it's off and you set the BIOS to change that and then you updated the BIOS. Well, now you can't fix it with this. On this one, you'll have external power and you totally could. I suspect that the pins on the light one, there's probably a pin to supply five volt power separately. Um, so you could probably still set this one up to have external power. It just requires a little bit more work. Oh, this one has two extra Type-C ports. What is, what, you see this? One, two, three. Oh, I'm so silly. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, actually I'm wrong. You don't connect the little control board with the jumpers. You connect the control board with a USB cable. That's what the third port is for and that's why it comes with two cables. Plugging into there. You take this and you plug it into your motherboard, chonk. That's much cleaner, I like that. Actually, just reading this diagram on the side, these connections here are for serial. And I have heard some rumblings from Wendell that he's setting it up so you could plug one of his KVMs into this thing. And instead of it being a single computer KVM, bam, now it's a four computer KVM. I guess let's power it on. Boom. Oh, it has lights. Now you might notice there's a micro SD card in here already. The light version doesn't come with an SD card. They just provided one when they sent these to us. While we wait for this to turn on, there is some undesirables regarding the Nano KVM we should probably mention. Specifically, that the firmware is not yet open source and a hacker man's on the internet did reverse engineer some of it and found some things that are not that great, like hard coded secret keys for things, which is not good. And uh, randomly a cat picture. They are a Chinese company, so eh. Once they open source the firmware and hopefully at some point port Pi KVM software, which is really great software to it, then that stuff should be resolved. And in theory, you could roll your own software, but for now you kind of have to deal with that being the case. It is still like a beta and they have committed to like fixing the things that were mentioned by that dude. But for now, buyer beware, 
probably run it on a VLAN if you're gonna use these things. Thanks Pulseway for sponsoring today's video. They've simplified monitoring your network and systems by giving you the freedom to do it on the go. Just set up an automation or turn on notifications and you'll never have to worry about keeping someone on site again. Plus it works with practically any operating system you can think of. Start a free trial today and save 40% on all Pulseway plans using our link in the description. This is um, not looking great. It's barely doing anything. I have a sneaking suspicion it's like very out of date firmware or something. See, I loaded the JavaScript. Hey! Okay, it's working now. I suspect that it wasn't getting enough power. So I plugged in the extra power cable, which was charging my laptop before, and now it's working. HDMI. Hey! Wow, it's working, look at that. Kind of, I can't interact with it. Let me see if there's a firmware update before we go any further. Check for update. There's a minor one. Let's let's run that and then we'll try it. It's one of those updates that doesn't have a progress bar. It just says update started in a spinning circle. For whatever reason, the update seems to just get stuck. It shows pending in the developer console for Chrome forever. So I'm gonna open this up and flash the new image on the SD card that's in here and then We'll try it again and see if it works. I mean, I guess this is a good opportunity to see what's inside this one. It's a bit strange that they didn't just leave a, a hole in the mold so you could get at the SD card if you wanted, like if it died and you wanted to replace it or something like that. Oh God. Yeah, see like that's not that easy to get to. It hits the this. So even having it open this much, I, I still can't get at it. Wow, cute. Oh, look at that. It's got a little more going on in here. The bottom in this is like, you can see like how much is the same. It's just got like a little hat on top with the screen and the extra USB ports. I'm not gonna lie and say it isn't kind of jank that this screen is just literally vibing in there. It gets held down a bit by the plastic on top, but it's still free roaming. Well, the screen says it's not working, but I just accessed it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's loading way faster now. So there's two different versions we're talking about here. There's the firmware image of the device, which is what you flash to the SD card. And then there's like the version of the web interface that you're interacting with. I flashed the new image on there, which seems to have fixed our internet problems. And then I just updated the application that seems to fix our screen. I think they borked something because every time I update it, it says it's on 2.04 again and that it has an update to 2.07. Fast forward a few days and we got a response back from the Cypede people. I think that's how you pronounce it. Doesn't matter, the people that make the Nano KVM, which is what this thing is. And uh, it turns out it was a bug with their CDN where it was like caching an old version of the firmware. So when you updated, it, it was downloading and updating to the version it was already on. They sent us a little script to update it properly, which seems to have worked. And look, I have a computer output. It's actually kind of better than I was expecting. To be honest, I, I thought it was gonna be a pretty choppy, crappy experience. Like, usable, but not great. That's because it's based on a super tiny development single board computer called the Lychee RV Nano, which is, I mean, the light version here. It's almost the entirety of the unit but it's very small and it uses a RISC-V architecture. So it's reduced instruction set and open source technically. And that's what makes it so cheap, but it's also <laughs> only three cores, I think technically. One major core, one minor core, and one low power core. And then 256 megabytes of DDR3 memory on this little guy. Tail scale is great because you can remotely connect to it without port forwarding. Uh, it's basically like a peer to peer VPN if you're not familiar and it is directly integrated. I'm not gonna set it up, but we can click the login to see what it does. The fact that that's integrated in, it's super nice. Oh yeah, look at that. Login.tailscale, click the button and log in. I mean, aside from that, there's not a whole lot else you can do. I could try, oh, look at that. Okay, so one of the headers it connects to is a hard drive LED. And if your hard drive LED is blinking, uh, it supposedly will display in here. And I also could press the power button although that is not connected right now. You can issue wake on LAN, you can open a terminal, you can run scripts. Oh, you know what, here, let me try to mount an image. Let's try and enable virtual USB again. Does that, oh, hey, look at that. Uh, virtual USB just like lets you access the SD card. So here's all my Ubuntu ISOs in here. If I wanna boot off of it, I need to reboot it. Well, let's try and reboot this computer and Im install Ubuntu on it, or at least start the installer. Oh, it's working, look at that. It does everything I would want in a KVM. 
I mean, realistically, I'm not the type to like wire in leads for my power button, even though I do like the implementation of it just like being a USB cable that makes it a lot less jank than just having a bunch of random wires running all over the place. It seems to do like KVM slash, you know, remote management control of a computer stuff just fine. I mean, I'm booting up the Ubuntu desktop 2404 here. It's probably gonna take a little while because it's USB 2, but it is booting. It's a little glitchy. The update experience wasn't the best, but for $30, I really can't complain. I, uh, I think if you're looking for something like this and a, you're the tinkering type, this is probably good enough for you and you'll probably like to screw around with it. Uh, if you're more normy and you like your stuff to just work, well, I probably wouldn't go with this yet. <laughs> Check out a Pi KVM. Those things are really robust, uh, but way more expensive. And look at that, there's the Ubuntu installer. Beautiful, it works. If you do buy one, make sure you flash the new firmware and then check their GitHub issues for how to flash the new software for the dashboard because that was a whole kerfuffle. But overall, pretty sick. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Check out maybe the Ubiquity Cloud Gateway Max video that we did recently. That was pretty fun.